Stefan Feld is one of the most beloved board game designers of the modern age. I was first introduced to his games with the Castles of Burgundy. I was so impressed with it, I decided to purchase more of his games including Macau, Bora Bora, and Luna. Ouch! This worker placement action selection game has a unique board which consists of several small island pieces surrounding a large central temple island. You construct this main island by placing temple boards equal to the number of players face up and the rest stay face down. There are temple tiles which match the boards in play. Give each player one of the lowest numbered tiles and the players then take that tile, one of their novice meeples and a book of wisdom and place them all on the matching space in the temple. Now construct the guard path to the temple by placing these guard tiles and temple tiles according to specific rules all the way from the temple gate to the end of the path. Put the guard of the temple on the last guard tile. Place the four time tokens with the burning candle side up in ascending order here. Each player places a token here on the first council of priests space. Put the influence points tokens here. Put the matching favor tokens on each island according to the number of players. Then randomly place the moon priestess, master builder and apostate figures on any island you wish. Give each player an overview sheet, playing pieces and five influence points. Choose a starting player and give him or her this figure. On the first round starting with the first player, players place one shrine on a unique island of their choice. Next players take turns placing four sets of two novices on islands of their choice but not on islands with their own pieces already there. Now players take favor tokens from the two islands where they didn't place their playing pieces. The game is played in phases beginning with the action phase. Players can see on their overview sheets which actions they can take. You may take aisle actions. With the priest's favor action you can use two novices to get a favor token from an island. Show that you've used the novices by placing them on the side of that island. These novices are now inactive for the rest of this round. You are not allowed to take any favor token that you already have in your possession. Favor tokens can be Book of Wisdom, Novice, Shrine, Herb, Sailboat, Bribery and Title favors. With the Recruit action you can use two novices from any island to recruit a new novice from your supply. He is placed next to this island and now all three novices are inactive. With the shrine action, you may construct one of your shrines on the island where the master builder is located. You need to return a shrine favor and use two novices to help in the construction. Just remember that you can't build a shrine if you already have one on that island. But multiple players can build a shrine here. Why do you want shrines? When a shrine is present on an island, you only need one novice to do certain actions instead of two. The herb action allows you to reactivate one or two novices on one island when you return this token. Other actions you can take are movement actions. With the journey action, take any number of active novices and rowboat them to any number of islands. They are inactive after this tiring journey. With the Tide action, you return a Tidal Favor token and the Tide takes any number of active or inactive novices to any number of islands. They are all exhausted from swimming and are inactive afterwards. With the Sailboat action, you return a Sailboat Favor token and move one or two novices from a single island to another single island. However, these novices are still active and can be utilized for another action this round. Temple actions are also available. With the promotion action, you need two novices from one island to claim a temple tile. The tile must be the same symbol as the island from which these novices come and it must be approved which means it lies between the temple guard and the landing area. Put one novice on the temple tile and the other novice becomes inactive. If you have a bribery token then you can use it to get past the temple guard and claim an unapproved tile in the next section behind him. The sanctification action allows you to move your approved temple tile into the temple. Move it to the same numbered space on the board and gain influence points equal to the number of points where the temple guard is standing. This number gets smaller each round so try to get there early. You will need yet another bribery token if you want to move an unapproved temple tile into the temple. If there are any opponents standing on spaces adjacent to the novice who just arrived and they're standing on spaces with lower number and they aren't on a book of wisdom then they are displaced hey. and moved into the landing area. You gain one influence point for each opponent you displace. 
Displaced novices are available to be moved to other islands in later actions. The book action allows you to return a Book of Wisdom token and take a Book of Wisdom. Then place it under one of your temple novices. They are now protected from displacement and you get an influence point as well. The Council of Priests action means that you can take as many novices as you wish and move your piece up a number of seats equal to the novices you've used. Move to the top of any stacks here, unless you're at the last seat where you move to the bottom. What other actions are there? Well, this apostate is bad news, and you can use novices from the island where he stands to move him along to another island. Move him as many islands away as you've used novices to do it. You can return this novice token to take another action, but you can't use it to claim a temple tile or get the novice token back. Lastly, you can take a meditation action and turn over the top time token. You can still take other actions afterwards, but this action speeds the end of the round along. Once the last time token is turned over, the action phase is over. The player who turned over the last one gets an influence point, and the player to her left gets the start player figure for the next round. Now you can begin the scoring phase. Count the number of active novices and shrines on the island where the moon priestess is standing. The player with the most gets points shown by the large number here. Second and third places get the point shown here. Now look at the island where the apostate is standing. Count both the active and inactive novices, add one, and lose that number of influence points. Shrines don't count here. Finally, look at the temple island. Each novice you have here gives you one influence point. After the scoring phase, a new round begins. All novices become active again, and the time tokens return. The temple guard moves to the next guard tile. The moon priestess now moves clockwise a number of islands equal to the large printed number. The master builder does the same. The apostate now moves to cause trouble on the next clockwise island which contains any novices. After the sixth round, the game is over. After scoring the regular round scoring, players earn additional influence points. Each shrine you've built is worth four points. Each favor token that you haven't used is worth one point. And lastly, your position in the Council of Priests gains you the appropriate number of points. The player with the most influence points at the end of the game wins. This is not my favorite Stefan Feld title, but it's still a solid game. The artwork by Clemens Franz is very nice, and the graphic design does a good job of keeping you on track. Once you learn the iconography, these player boards are quite helpful. There are a lot of difficult choices to make in pursuing a winning strategy, which I like. These time tokens are pretty cool, and even though you have novices left to do actions, other players can cut your time short just by turning these over before you're ready. That can cause some great tension, as you rush to complete your actions before time runs out. There are almost no random elements in the game, which is nice for a change. It's all about the choices you make, and perhaps being the first player to do certain actions. It's a little less of a point salad than most of Stefan Feld's other games, but there are multiple paths to victory nonetheless. This game feels unique in my collection, and I enjoy it each time I play. Give it a try, and see if you can gain the most influence with Luna. If you enjoyed this video, please take a look at the other stick formations I've made. And if it's not too much trouble, please subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Thanks for watching.